Ale, aleluja. A, aleluja. A, aleluja. A, ale, aleluja. Aleluja. Ale, ale, aleluja. Ale, aleluja. Ale, aleluja. Ale, aleluja. Lord, you've been so good to us. You've been so good to us. You've been so good to us. You've been good to us. You've been good to us. You've been good to us. Oh, you've been good to us. You've been so good to us. Now, Lord, you and you alone are worthy. You are so, so worthy. You are worthy. You are, you are worthy. Alleluia. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, alleluia. Alle, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Give God some praise. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory yes, sir. for the great things that he has that done. He's done. Yes, sir. Thank you, Reverend Dr. God bless you, White brother. Jackson. Amen. Taking us higher in shuttle praise. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is so good. God is blessing when? Right now. God is blessing right now. Welcome to Emmanuel Temple CME Church in Victorville, California, where we do say God is good all the time. And all the time, God is so good. Well, let us go to the Word of God. Amen. We are in the last chapter of this powerful book of Habakkuk. Amen. Yes, only three chapters, but can change the whole world upside down. Amen. <laughs> All of Christendom don't take much. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse number 14. If you turn there in your Bibles, let us look. The Bible says, amen. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind yes, to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Amen. Well, give me honor to God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for all of our sins. The Bible says he hung, he bled, he died. But on the third day, he got up from the grave. That's the gospel. That's the good news to all of us. We want to use as a subject title, and you all pray with me this morning. One day God will remove evil from the world. 
Hallelujah. Beloved, if you look with me in Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse number 10, the Bible says, the mountains saw thee, and they trembled. <laughs> the overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. That's a lot. Habakkuk gives a fearful picture of God. The wrath of God makes the earth to tremble. Nations tremble at the wrath of God. The wrath of God makes waters gush from beneath. An earthquake is caused by the mighty advance of the Lord of hosts. God has angelic forces at his disposal. If you read the Bible, one angel can take out 185,000 soldiers. Just one angel. Then Jesus told Pilate, I could call 12 legions if I want to and put an end to this. <laughs> Tell your neighbor he chose to die. <laughs> he chose to die. God specializes and can do what no other power can do. Habakkuk said, the mountains crumble before God. Even the mountains recognize who God is. Flooding waters recognize the power of God. God's awesome power can cause upheavals in nature. The Red Sea and the Jordan River responded to the command of God. Can I back it up this morning? Beloved, you look at Psalms 77 and verse number 16. The Bible says, the waters saw thee. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> the waters saw thee. And they were afraid. <laughs> Y'all don't want to go with me this morning. The depths also were troubled. Does your Bible say that? If you look at Psalm 77 and verse 19, the, the Bible says, ooh, it says, your ways was in the sea. Sister then say, it would help if you give it to me too, amen. <laughs> and thy paths in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known. Not known. Is that all right? Yes, sir. If you look at Psalms 114 and verse number three, the, the, the Bible says in Psalms 114 and verse number three, the sea saw it. <laughs> yeah, y'all with me this morning and fled. Is that all right? Jordan was driven back. Can I go a little further? Psalms 114 and verse number 5, the, the, the Bible says, What ails thee, O thou sea, that thou fleddest? Thou Jordan, that thou was driven back. God's might uh -huh. is revealed in driving back the Red Sea yes, and driving back the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. God lets us know that he is the creator. Yes, 
And if he is the creator, Habakkuk wants us to know that he's also the judge of all the earth, land and sea, mountains and oceans, and stars and Milky Ways, all have to obey God. Verse 10 tells us to know that, that God is in control of what's going on on the land and in the water. He even used creation to defeat the Canaanites. God can use a rainstorm to turn a battlefield into a swamp. <laughs> just ask Deborah and Sisera God is in control of all of nature and he can use his power for his purpose oh y'all don't believe me this morning but I, I got some backup this morning Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse number 11 the Bible says the sun and the moon stood still yes, sir. <laughs> in their habitation. At the light of thy arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. We have the famous miracle of Joshua. Yes, sir. Can I go there this morning? When the day was made longer so that Joshua could win the battle. <laughs> they stretched out. The sun stood still. The moon stood still. I don't know about you, but I think that's control right there. Some serious control. And God leads his army of angels mm. and he marches through lands through Cana like a farmer threshing wheat can I go there and then he does that that his people might go in and get their inheritance y'all don't hear me this morning he defeats the enemy that the people of God might go in and get their inheritance. Can I bring that home this morning? You have an inheritance. You have an inheritance in Jesus Christ because Jesus defeated the enemy on Calvary's cross. Am I right about it? Say neighbor, neighbor, hey. I got an inheritance. This God of ours is so powerful, he can make the sun stand still and the moon stand still so that his people can be saved. Oh, God can save anybody. God works wonders on earth that people might be saved. Uh, can I go there? God works wonders in the sea that folks might be saved. Uh, God works wonders in nature that folks might get saved. Oh, he's working wonders today that you and I might get saved. Oh, he'll go to the utmost to save us. Somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus, this morning. Uh, it took a lot to save us. Your Lord marched through lands uh, with his indignation and, and threshed nations in his anger to save his people. How many of you know that he came all the way down from heaven? to die on the cross to save us today. That's, that's why we saved this morning. It's not that we were so good, so powerful. Oh, the 
Bible says he had some arrows. And, and the arrows refer to the lightnings and instrument of God's wrath. The Lord marched through the lands and threshed hmm, nations with his anger. Mm -hmm. Habakkuk says he sees what God has done in the past. Yes, sir. God's arrows and, and God's spears sped so quickly to the target of the enemy. Can I go there? Yes, sir. The sun and the moon paled before the presence of the lightning flashing, mm -hmm. uh, which went along with the hails that destroyed Israel's enemies at Gilgal. Come on. Can I go to this bone? Yeah. God in his wrath can control nature to defeat the enemy. Yes. Oh, I, I didn't give this one to you, Crystal. Amen. This, 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 is, this is Joshua chapter 10 and, and verse number 11, which shows, shows us that, that God can use nature to defeat his enemies when he's in battle. Matter of fact, he don't need our sword. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Joshua chapter 10 and verse number 11, the Bible says, and it happened. As they fled before Israel and were on the descent of Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them at Ezekiah, and, and they died. There were more, watch it now, there were more who died from the hailstone than the children of Israel killed with the sword. Uh, can I go there? God used hailstones to defeat the enemy. And more of the enemy died from the hailstone than they did from the sword. Yes, Can I go there this morning? Ah, oh, your God is an awesome God. Oh, his arrows recur repeatedly in scriptures as, as his instruments of judgment. Can I go there this morning? Psalms 77 and verses 17 and 18 the, the Bible says the clouds poured out water the skies sent out a sound thy arrows somebody said thy arrows. thy arrows thy arrows also went abroad the voice of thy thunder was in the heaven the lightnings lighten the world watch it now the earth trembled and shook isn't that a mighty god right there oh can i can i can i can i put it in my own language god is a war hero yeah god has won every battle god has won every war and god wants us to know that what he has done in the past he's gonna do it again somebody shout do it again Oh, he's going to do it again. Can I back it up this morning? Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse number 12. The, the, the Bible says, Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Uh, does the Bible say that? Can't help but get happy at that. Thou didst thresh the heathen in thy anger. Is that a powerful God right there? Habakkuk came to realize, Dr. Jackson, yes, his problems were not great, but God is great. And God is not asleep. Can I go there? God is very much awake. God is very much alive. Habakkuk had to learn God is not indifferent. God is concerned. Can I go there this morning? Habakkuk saw God as a thundering giant now who strolled through the lands with his indignation. Ah, uh, uh, he was mighty and majestic. Am I right about it? Oh, God wasn't tiptoeing through the tulips. Ah, uh, I need some help this morning. 
her back or took a good look at God again. Yes, Matter of fact, right now in chapter 3, if I can use my own language, he's reviewing God's resume. Come on now. <laughs> God got a resume. a resume. Can I go there? God in his wrath has threshed many nations. God in the past has defeated many nations. Like an ox treading out the grain yes, to separate the wheat from the chaff, yes, to crush the chaff. How many know this morning that God will separate the righteous from the unrighteous? Yes, uh, I need to talk with y'all today. Reverend Jackson, I need to talk with y'all today. And Brother Hudson and Sister Hudson, and Sister Ann and Sister Stella, and Brother Russell and Sister Russell. And Brother Randall and Sister Dobson and, and Sister Stenson and Dr. Dove. Uh, there's a great message in Habakkuk. Yes, sir. One day God is going to separate the wheat from the tares. Yes, sir. The prophet was confident that God now was going to do it again. Yes, sir. Uh, somebody said do it again. Do it again. God was going to separate his people from the enemy. God was going to crush the nations who were unbelieving and who were against him. And then after that, Israel could claim their blessing. Israel could claim their inheritance. But the enemy had to be defeated first. Am I right about it? Habakkuk also has an eye on the future. When Christ comes back as the lion of the tribe of Judah, yes, sir. Jesus will return again one day huh, to judge all the nations. This is an awesome mm, picture of the future. Yes, sir. This is an answer to all of generations that God will not let evil go on forever. I got to say that one more time. God is answering Habakkuk yes, that he's not going to let evil go on forever. He will trample down the nations that are against him. For he has come to save his people. Jesus will separate the sheep from the goat. Yes, <laughs> Take neighbor, neighbor. God is in it to win it. <laughs> God will win out in the end. Yes, he will. God's will will be done. God is working to save souls, yes, to save lives, and that he would none perish. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. God wants Habakkuk to know, and me to know, and you to know, that evil will not go on forever. Ah, I got a word for you this morning. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, evil will not go on forever. Can I go a little higher? Can I get a little deeper? Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 13. You see that uh, God is a victorious God. Can I go there? It says, Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thy anointed. Yes. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. Does that your Bible say that? Yes. By discovering the foundation unto the neck, Salah. Mm -hmm. I think somebody ought to say Salah this morning. Salah. I think somebody ought to turn your neighbor and say, stop, look, and listen. Can I break it down a little bit? Hear me now. God demonstrates these acts of power for one reason, to save his people. God loves you, and God loves me, and God wants Everybody saved. Can I go there? God's purpose was to crush wickedness 
and free his people. Yes, sir. God's purpose was to bring deliverance to his people. Can I go there? Special deliverance was the goal behind God's destructions. God is concerned about this world. Uh, he wanted her back to know that I'm not asleep. I'm not a little old man asleep in heaven. I'm wide awake. Can I go there this morning? Can I back it up this morning? I want you to think back a little bit. God saved Israel out of Egypt. Am I right about it? And then that same God later on saved Israel out of Babylon. Am I right about it? That same God can save you and I today. Am I right about it? Through Jesus Christ. God is concerned about us. Can I go there? Habakkuk said, God crushed the leaders of the land and he stripped them so that he could save his people. Can I go there? Like a building in which the roof is ripped off and then the entire structure is demolished and now the foundation is laid bare. That's what he's talking about in the, that verse. But can I make it real simple? God defeated all his enemies. Am I right about it? In that verse, it takes us back to Pharaoh. Uh, how many know that God defeated Pharaoh? Yeah. He defeated Pharaoh and all his horsemen. Yes, sir. Can I go there this morning? Yes, God has a message for Habakkuk. He has a message for us. When we feel like God is not listening <laughs> and God doesn't care and God is not concerned or when we're asking the question, where is God? Can I go there? Or why does your God allow so much suffering in the world? Can I go there this morning? If you go to Exodus chapter 14, look at verses 23 through 28. The Bible says, and the Egyptians, help me Holy Ghost, and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Yes. Does your Bible say that? Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Ah, uh, he got his posse with him. Yeah. Can I go there this morning? And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians. Yes through the pillar of fire and of the cloud. Can I go there and trouble the host of the Egyptians? Did your Bible say that? Can I go there this morning? Can I make it plain this morning? And took off the chariot wheels. Can I go there this morning? Uh, when you don't have your wheels, it's hard to ride. Can I go there this morning? Yeah, and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. Uh, can I go there this morning? For the Lord fighteth for them. Y'all didn't hear me this morning. For the Lord fighteth for them. I wish y'all could hear me this morning. For the Lord fighteth for them. I wish I had a witness this morning for the Lord fight us for them. Uh, if you're discouraged this morning for the Lord fight us for them. Can I go there this morning for the Lord fight us for them against the Egyptian. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptian upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. Does your Bible say that this morning? Can I go there this morning? 
and Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea. Can I go there? I want y'all to stretch your hands out this body. Uh, in obedience this body. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea. And the sea returned to its strength. When the morning appeared. Can I go there? And the Egyptians fled against it. How many know you can't outrun God? Can I go there this morning? And the Lord. It wasn't nobody else, but and the Lord. Can I go there this morning? And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Am I right about it? And the waters returned him. Can I go there? And covered the chariots. Can I go there? And the horsemen. Uh, he said, all the apostasy. Can I go there this morning? And all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Can I go there this morning? Yes, sir. There remain not so much as one of them. Take every neighbor, neighbor and know not one. <laughs> yeah, not one of them. Uh, God tells Habakkuk, yes, sir. I dealt with evil in the past and I will deal with evil today. Can I go there? Child of God, don't you know that when the enemy come in like a flood, uh, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Am I right about it? Child of God, can I go there? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rise against you, you shall condemn in judgment. Somebody give God a hand this morning. Yes, yeah, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, can I go a little further? Not only will God save you, he'll deliver you. He'll help you. He'll defeat your enemy. How many know he'll heal you? He'll pick you up. He'll give you power. Can I go there this morning? The Bible says God struck the head of the household of Pharaoh. The firstborn died in the household. The angel of death went by their household, took out the firstborn. Am I right about it? And the children of Israel, they escaped because they had the blood on the doorpost. They said they passed over them. Can I go there? That's where they got to pass over from. Somebody said, thank God for the blood. I heard on the cross of Calvary, blood was shed. Can I go there? That we have power over, over death, power over the grave, power over sin because Jesus shed his blood on the cross of Calvary I dare you this morning say thank God for the blood that was shed for us on the cross of Calvary there's power in the blood power in the word power in the spirit can I go there this morning power in his name Somebody say, thank God for the blood that was shed on Calvary. Well, can I go a little further? Can I go a little deeper? Well, Habakkuk, chapter 3 and verse 14. Thank you, Lord. Let's get some revelation up here. Thou didst strike through with his staffs the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Yes, oh, Habakkuk in verse 14 identifies with Israel. The prophet talks about how God treads of the land. God destroys the enemies. The enemies will fall by their own weapons because God sends confusion into the camp. They will fall by mutual destruction. Yes, 
God sends a spirit of confusion. Can I go there this morning? Ah, oh, First Samuel chapter fourteen and first number twenty. The the Bible says, and Saul and all the people that were with him assembled themselves, and they came to the battle. And behold, every man's sword was against his fellow. <laughs> and there was a very great discomfiture. And another version of the Bible said there was very great confusion. How many know that God can send confusion in the enemy camp? Uh, if he did it in the past, can he do it again? Uh, if God defeated evil in the past, can he defeat him today? Am I right about it? But how many know that God can send a spirit of confusion in the enemy's camp? Yes, sir. Can I back it up this morning? Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verses 23 and 24. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Yes, can I go there this morning? For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir yes, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. Can I go there this morning? And when Judah came towards the watch to tower in the wilderness, help me Holy Ghost, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Somebody said they destroyed each other. Can I go there? God sent confusion in the camp. Tell you, they neighbor. God can send confusion in the enemy camp. Yeah, the enemy will fight each other. Can I go there? If God be for you. Y'all don't want to hear me this morning. Who can be against you? How many know this morning that God can send confusion into your enemy's camp? Uh, and they will fight each other and forget all about you. Can I go there this morning? Can I back it up this morning? I heard the battle's not yours. Ah, can I go there? The battle's not yours. The battle is the Lord. Can I go there? If it had not been for the Lord, I heard David say, on my side, where would I be? Can I go there this morning? Well, in verse 14, there is so much hope. God talks about the ultimate devastation of the enemy, getting them out the way of his people. I want you to know that God is in control. How many know that God is in control this morning? Uh, those who sought to destroy Israel wound up being destroyed. How many know that God's word is true? Oh, God told Abraham a long time ago. Can I go there? He said, I will bless those who bless you. Can I go there? He also said, I'll curse those who curse you. Can I go there this morning? Child of God, those who bless you will be blessed. Am I right about it? Child of the king. Uh, child of God. Those who try to curse you will be cursed themselves. Can I go there this morning? I heard that Balaam was a hired hand, a false prophet. Oh, he got hired to curse Israel. Can I go there? He went high on a mountaintop. He tried three times to curse Israel. And each time he wound up blessing them. Can I go there this morning? Can I go there this morning? He came to the conclusion what God has blessed, no man can curse. 
Am I right about it? Can I go there this morning? What's for you is for you. Can't nobody take it away. If God has determined to bless you, can't nobody stop it. Can't nobody interfere with it. Can't nobody block it. Because if God has intended to bless you, you are blessed. Can I go there this morning? If God has intended to put his fence around you, his protection around you, his elevation around you, your, your promotion, can't nobody get in the way. Can I go there this morning? If God has put you in his elevator of blessing and has pressed the button, you on your way up. I don't care what they say on the ground. They neighbor, neighbor, I can't be stopped. Can I go there this morning? If God wants to bless you, you gonna be blessed. Come on, give God some praises this morning. Well, Habakkuk said there were some barbaric warriors gloating, thinking that they had God's people. But then God stepped in. Uh, when it looks like evil's going to win, God will win in the end. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, evil may look like it's winning. Come on, somebody. But God is going to win in the end. Tell your neighbor, he's in it to win it. Can I go there? Uh, there's a but God for everything. When the devil come in like a flood, there's a but God. Can I go there this morning? Oh, but God changed things. When they came in pride, they left in panic. Can I go there this morning? Ah, uh, God will change that enemy pride into panic. Can I go there this morning? How many know that God can turn things around? Can I go there this morning? How many know that God can defeat the Egyptian in your life? Can I go there this morning? How many know that God can defeat the Babylonians that's in your life? Can I go there this morning? Oh, he can trample over the enemies. I got to back it up. Can I back it up this morning? Oh, Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse number 15. Help me, Holy Ghost. The Bible says, you just walk through the sea. <laughs> Is he bad? He bad. <laughs> Is he bad? <laughs> ah, that Habakkuk's praising him now. He recognized the greatness of God now. Oh, Dr. X, same one's asking question. Now he's giving affirmation how bad God is. <laughs> Can I go there? Yes, he started off with a question mark, but he's ended up with an exclamation. <laughs> he said, Thou didst walk through the sea with thy horses through the heap of great waters. Oh, can I go there? Habakkuk is getting ready to land his plane, folks. <laughs> he got all the answers that he needed. Can I go there? By talking about the one of the most awesome miracles in the Bible. The dividing of the Red Sea. Uh, God took his people through the Red Sea. He destroyed the Egyptian. Oh, saints of God, he will take you through your Red Sea. Uh, he will destroy the enemies in your life. God will deliver you this morning. If you put your trust in the Lord, put your trust in Jesus. Uh, Habakkuk is getting ready to land his plane in Come chapter 3. Come on. Oh, Habakkuk first start off wondering how could God allow so much sin in Israel? Yes, or oh, in chapter 1, he was wondering, oh, how can you allow all these corrupt leaders to go on doing what they're doing? How can you allow the rich to take advantage of the poor? Oh, he had his question, how could God 
being a righteous God allows so much suffering to go on in the world. Oh, God being a good God, how can he allow these things to go on and seem like he's so unconcerned? Somebody said that was chapter one, amen. <laughs> can I go a little further? And God answered Habakkuk and said, I'm going to use Babylon to judge Israel. Oh, Habakkuk became more perplexed than he was the first time. Can I go there? Uh, he started wondering how could God use such wicked folks to judge them? He said, they're more wicked than we are. How can you, a holy God, allow this? Can I go there this morning? Well, God says, write on the tablet uh, that I'm going to raise up Babylon. But after I raise them up, then I'm going to judge them. But I want you to know that the just shall live by faith. Can I go there this morning? Uh, he learned that God is concerned about injustice. God is concerned about suffering. Oh, Habakkuk learned that God is concerned about idolatry. Ah, uh, in verse, uh, excuse me, chapter 3, he's praising God. Uh, can I go there this morning? He learned that God is going to deal with wicked leaders. Can I go there? He learned that God sits high, but he looks low. How many know that this morning that God sits high, but he looks low? Can I go there this morning? In chapter 3, he lets us know that God is an awesome God. Uh, we hear a different tone in chapter 3. Uh, as he's getting ready to land his plane, he says, God is a fearful God. God is a dreadful God. God is a powerful God. God is an almighty God. He said, just look back to Mount Sinai. See how he descended on Mount Sinai with lightning and thundering to show that he's a great God, a mighty God, an awesome God, a delivering God, a way-making God. Can I go there this morning? Uh, I got to get ready to let Habakkuk land his own plane. Habakkuk said that same God yesterday is the same God today. Y'all don't hear me? It will be the same God in the future. Can I land right here? There's a scripture that talks about the future. This same God is going to judge in the future. Can I go there this morning? Can I back it up this morning? Can I give you word this morning? That same God of yesterday is the same God of today. It will be the same God tomorrow. Can I go there this morning? And he's going to judge evil like he did in the past. Come on, let's go to Isaiah chapter 63. And verses 1 to 6. Ah, uh, how majestic this God is. Can I go there? Who is this? <laughs> Somebody shout, who is this? Who is this that cometh from Edom <laughs> with dyed garments <laughs> from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. That's it. I that speak in righteousness, mighty, good God Almighty, to save. Wherefore art thou red? Question asking in thy apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine vat. I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people, there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample.
trample them round in my fury and their blood mm, and their blood mm, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my raiment for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come Ooh. and I looked and there was none to help and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me. And my fury, it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk Come on, Jackson. In my fury. Brothers Russell, and I will bring down mm, Brothers Hudson and Stell. And I will bring down their strength to the earth as I land. When Jesus Christ comes back, Tim, he's not coming back as the Lamb of God. He's coming back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Let me let McGee help us out right here. He says, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra. Edom is symbolic of the flesh and the entire race of Adam. Mankind at this time will be judged when Jesus comes back the second time. Verse 2 says, Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel? What's that red on you? <laughs> in that day, men would mm, go to the wine press, stomp the grapes, and the juice would spurt out and stain their garments red. Jesus says, when I come back, and I tread the nations. On my garment is going to be blood. And watch this. He makes a play. It ain't going to be my blood. <laughs> the first time I came, I shed my blood. Can I go there this morning? Can I go there this morning? The first time I came, I shed my blood. But when I come back the second time, I'm going to shed your blood on my garment as I land my plane on the cross of Calvary the first time he shed his blood. But when he comes back the second time, as judge, he's going to shed the blood of unbelievers, enemies, all those who oppose him. Habakkuk got the answer to his questions. Yes, God is concerned. 
affirmation. Yes, God loves you. Yes, God's going to deal with the suffering in this world. Yes, God's going to deal with the droughts, the famines, the murders, the bloodsheds, the hurt, the pain, the suffering, the death. When he comes back the second time, Everything that you have questioned about, God is going to take care of. Somebody said, thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Dr. Jackson, bless us in song. And then I'll pray with you. God will remove evil from this world in the future. Thank you, Lord. He will. <laughs> of you. Hear that, saints. Through every day. Over the way. God he, will. He will. Take care. Take care of you. Yes, He will. God will take care of, of you. Oh, yes, he will. God will take care of you. When Jesus come back, comes back the second time, Oh, he's going to write in every wrong. And every question mark is going to be an exclamation. With every head bowed, every eye closed. We thank you, Lord, that one day you're going to bring evil to an end. We thank you, Lord, that one day you're going to get rid of all suffering. For those who have questions like Habakkuk did in the very beginning, they will have an answer that you're ridding this world of all suffering. You're going to get rid of all wickedness. And then there won't be any more diseases, dying and crying. There'll be no more sick down here. There'll be no more wars and rumors of wars. There'll be no more famine and no more droughts. No more troubles and heartaches and pain. No more worrying, Lord. No more cursed earth, Lord. Oh, no more pain and suffering. No more problems because of your presence. Thank you, Lord, for Habakkuk, Lord. Thank you that many times we were like him in the beginning. We, we had questions and we had wondering and why this, and why this allowed to happen in my life and why so much pain and Lord, were you there? Did you hear me? But, but we're glad to see, Lord, in, in Habakkuk that yes, you're concerned. Yes, you love us. And yes, everything in the end is going to be all right. Hallelujah. And you're going to be praised and worshiped and adored 
and magnified and glorified. And then you're going to dry all tears from my eyes. No more death. No more sorrow. No more sickness. No more pain. For the former things have passed away. Before I close, those of you out there in the audience, if there's anybody who's not saved, just raise your hand like Moses did. Just raise it towards the screen and, and let me just pray for you. And you pray with me and pray these words. Dear Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. And, and I believe that God raised you from the dead. I believe you died for my sins. You, you shed your blood for my sins. And God raised you from the dead. And, and I call you my Lord and my Savior. And I invite you into my life. And forgive me of all my sins. I want to be your child. Save me, Lord. And I believe, Lord, by faith in you and your word, that I am saved. And then, Lord, everyone's sick in body, everyone weak in body, everyone need a touch this morning. Let, like Moses, let them just stretch their hands out towards you, Lord, and heal us. Bless us as you have in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you till I see you again. God bless you all. All you may need, He will provide. Oh, God will take care, take care of you. Yes, He will. Well, nothing that you ask will be denied oh God will take care of you no matter no matter what the test may be God will take care of you when life's challenges come your way, and they surely will, He is there for you. Oh, God will. God will take care. He will take care of you. God will take care of of you